in 2008, I requested a Linux server for um, experimenting with open source software. Mm-hmm. I just wanted uh, a space, an online space to to install web software um, to test it out. Um, and uh, one of those pieces of software was WordPress. And um, uh, very quickly, I realized that actually it was the WordPress multi-user version um, that we would were interested in at the time the code base was split to the multi-user and the single mm-hmm. site version um, and um, so we started running WordPress multi-user and um, just informally started telling other colleagues um, and suggesting it might be used to support some classes we were interested in seeing how it could be used for teaching and learning to support teaching and learning so that went on uh, for about a year uh, with continued success Um, and uh, um, I realized that it it really needed a kind of a permanent presence in the university and proper uh, kind of infrastructure behind it rather than just this little server I had. So um, I wrote up a paper, um, presented it to kind of key people in ICT and and my own department, and it was agreed that um, it should be given its proper domain name rather than the domain name I was using for my work. Um, uh, So it got blogs.lincoln.ac.uk plus a dedicated server for it, uh, kind of a modest server at the time. Um, and so the um, we then opened that up um, and didn't make a song and a dance about it, but just continued to tell people about it and started to kind of push out um, kind of all staff messages that it was available. Um, and uh, at all times, um, it's been open for any member of staff or student to log in and create one or more websites. So it's an entirely open system um, for the Lincoln University community. Um, and uh, the way that's done is that we use, and I can run through the kind of plugins that we use to kind of create this environment um, we use an LDAP plugin and uh, it's configured so that there are you know public signups are, are turned off but anyone with a Lincoln address with an LDAP account can just sign in automatically um, so uh, the in terms of the the offer at Lincoln that's what it is it's an open publishing platform um, and anyone can set up as many websites as they like um, and uh, to date, we've had over 4,000 people sign in. Wow. Um, d- it doesn't mean that they're actively yeah. creating blogs, but they're signed in. Uh, and I'll explain in a second why, um, what else they might be doing. Um, and we've got about 1,800 sites uh, that have been created. Again, by no means all of them are now active, uh, and we need to do some housekeeping to go through them and find out exactly which ones have been abandoned and, and which ones are still active. But um, early on as well, in 2009, uh, um, uh, Buddy Press was being developed, and um, you know, why WordPress, though it was uh, kind of deployed on its own dedicated server it still felt like a bit of an experiment at the time and so I was playing around with different plugins and I added BuddyPress to it Um, and you know this was the beta version at the time Um, and uh, uh, and we've we've stuck with BuddyPress actually Uh, not that you know I don't think uh, we use it heavily I you know we have a social network, I suppose, at the university, but people don't really use it um, as a social network. It's mainly, I think, useful uh, in that it brings together um, activity across the platform mm. so that when when someone goes to blogs.lincoln, they're not just presented with uh, you know, a blog and instructions on how to set up their own blog. Or, um, they're you know if you go to it you'll see that there's basically an activity stream that shows the kind of uses of uh, uh, WordPress at any one particular time um, and uh, uh, and so people can sign into that 
uh, without having to create a blog either or a website. Um, so uh, of those 4,000 or so users that have signed in, not all of them will have created a website. Um, yeah. which is why, of course, there's, there's less than half the number of websites. Um, but again, I quite like it because it pe means that people can join that site. They can kind of ease themselves into it without feeling they've got to go through the whole process of setting up a, a site. Um, uh, and also BuddyPress offers groups, which I, I think uh, are just a nice thing to be able to offer. Again, I've never really pushed them. I mention them to people during WordPress workshops. Um, but uh, I think that it's it's a, it's a it's a simple and trivial thing for us to provide on top of WordPress. Um, if people need online kind of groups, you know, private, public groups, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's 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 how we offer it. There, I suppose there's there's quite a lot of trust involved. Though over the years. Um, there's been hardly any abuse of the system whatsoever. Um, the uh, when someone is um, not logged in, there's a big yellow banner that basically says "Welcome to the blogs." Um, you know, please read our community guidelines. And these are some guidelines that I kind of drew up very, very, very early on, based on a, a bunch of other kind of community guidelines that were floating around on the web at the time. Um, and it's just all about kind of trust and respect and, mm -hmm. and ensuring that people don't abuse each other online. Um, and they also link to the university's kind of official acceptable use policy and that kind of thing for, for use of ICT equipment. Um, and so we're kind of covered in terms of um, pointing out to people that, you know, WordPress is no different to the use of any other system at the university. Um, and in general, um, you know, people are... Um, People, even now, um, five years later, people are still, I think, a little bit kind of nervous and, and somewhat hesitant about, you know, starting to use a new and unfamiliar system. So they're, they're not likely just to jump in and start throwing their weight about. Mm. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, hardly any abuse. And, and I think that that's probably one of the issues that other universities might be wary of. Um, and my experience was uh, rather than kind of uh, raise it, you know, kind of build walls and, and make things difficult for people, just just see what happens and, and intervene if, if necessary. I suspect it, it will hardly ever be necessary. Um, and uh, the other nice thing about the way we have WordPress set up is that um, it's one of the very few platforms, if the, if the only platform at the university, whereby a, a member of staff or a student can invite someone from outside the university onto the system as well. So they act as gatekeepers to the system. Uh, they don't have to request that you know a, a research partner from the University of Leicester should should be added to the system. There's nothing like that because WordPress maintains its own local user accounts. Mm. And so um, uh, they can invite them in that way. And again, this LDAP plugin um, enables us to, to do that. Um, so it's it's. I think uh, that's one of the attractive things about it. So with the, the does the LDAP plugin remove the default kind of WordPress? Uh, login altogether or is uh, well it? It, still, it still looks the same you still yeah. log in the same way but yes it, it um depending on how you configure it basically you just push all authentication through the plugin and through ldap mm -hmm. um uh, uh and where um but it also checks the local account uh, database as well um mm -hmm. uh for for people that have been added right. in that way um do you have a, a a big problem with spam in terms of spam comments? No, we use a Kismet. Um, we sign up for a Kismet. I think we pay about 200 quid a year, uh, and there's no real spam issues. We do get a hell of a lot of spam. A Kismet catches almost all of it. Um, so it, it's very good value for money, in my view. Mm. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, we... we Early on, you, um, 
universities under the terms and conditions of a kismet you could use it for free um or it was a bit of a gray area i think mm. um but then i think uh, uh automatic who run the service obviously um they uh tightened things up a bit and although they never kind of uh, requested that we started to pay I felt obliged um, that we should be paying because really it's such good value in terms of what it does um, so that's uh, and hardly any spam filters through mm. relatively speaking you know a little bit does but it um, again the default moderation settings on WordPress are such that um, if uh, you know, the first time that anyone comments, it has to be moderated anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah spam's again not an issue. What? Are, oh, how about um, brute force attacks? Is is that a growing problem for you, or have you got? N- not experienced it. Mm. No, not experienced it. Um, well, we may have done. There have been times where the um, server has gone nuts um but I, I actually i don't think those were attacks when i looked into them i think they were more um about uh, ser- database resource um uh, about a year ago we moved the database off onto a dedicated mysql cluster that we have at the university um so the database is now sitting on a different server to the, mm. the web web application um i you know that's i that's not necessary to do immediately but i think um you'll want to uh you know once it's, things start growing hmm. and um is it just one installation of wordpress mul- mul- well, obviously mul- wordpress now has multi user yeah. built in so is it just one installation yeah of- one installation one server um one database uh, I know that there are ways of splitting everything up, but as yet, haven't needed to. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time uh, last year looking at caching. Um, we were getting these weird spikes, um, and so one of the things, as well as moving the database onto another server, is that I looked at different caching plugins. And in the end, because we were using Supercache for a long time, and I always thought it was it was excellent, um, and I think I still think it's excellent. But... Um, uh, on the whole, um, a more stable and, it from I think, more satisfactory method has been to turn APC on, the mm-hmm. um, PHP caching. Um, and uh, that doesn't work well with Supercache. Uh, you get weird 500 errors, uh, server errors, occasionally. So um, that's all the caching that we do, as well as MySQL caching as well. Um, PHP and MySQL caching are turned on. Mm. Um, But we don't use any of the WordPress caching plugins anymore. Right. And um, in terms of the selection of plugins and themes available to users, is it quite a tight list? Do you ever get requests for adding stuff? Yeah, so um, we started off being very kind of flexible and I was just installing plugins on request. You know, I was kind of checking them first and Mm -hmm. making sure that they were up to scratch. But, um, you know, five years ago, WordPress wasn't as mature and and comprehensive as it is now. And so there there were needs for plugins uh, quite regularly. And um, so over the years, we've installed about 70 plugins. Um, This summer... Um, I, together with a colleague, um, went through all the plugins. We audited them. Uh, there are some. There are some other plugins that can use to kind of audit um, uh, network installs of WordPress mm. to look at you know how often the themes are being used and the plugins are being used. Um, and what we did was we pulled all of the plugins. Or, or actually, no. All the plugins remain on the system, and they all remain active on the sites that activated them. But the access to those plugins in activating them um, on new sites has been removed. And we're now using a plugin called, um, let me just see, um, called Plugin Management. 
and that plugin is for network installs and basically it gives you much finer grain control over which sites have access to which plugins um, and so we, we've we've reined in the uh, the availability of plugins and whereas uh, a few months ago people had the choice of 70 they now have the choice of six um, six based on what were really popular and which I th what I think are, are, are useful and mature plugins um, that staff might want. So um, over time, and as sites get kind of uh, abandoned, um, I'm going to start withdrawing a lot of those plugins that are still on the system. Um, uh, what happens now if, is, and, and in the WordPress workshops that I give every month, um, I say to people, you know, if if you need a plugin, if you think you need a plugin, then just you know come to me and we'll talk about it. And and with this plugin management plugin, I can activate or I can make a plugin available to specific sites only, rather than mm. making them available across the system. Yeah. So that that I think is a, a better situation. The, the, you know, the WordPress is 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 better than it was five years ago. There's less of a need um, for most people. For most people. Um, there's less of a need for plugins, um, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole multimedia stuff now is handled nicely by WordPress and image galleries and that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, except for the real power users um, who, you know, you work with on a one case by case basis anyway. Um, mm. And it's the same with themes. What we've done. Um, we have used for the last two or three years um, a uh, service, uh, you know, EduBlogs, yeah. um, and uh, they have WPMU Dev. Um, it's a premium service that they run. Mm -hmm. We subscribe to that every year. Um, it's about £250 a year, and um, that gives us access to a support forum which I hardly ever use, um, but it's there if I need it. The support for WordPress is is so low. You know, there's, there's it's beyond me and um, a colleague. There's very little need for support. You know, it, it, it kind of runs itself. Um, the, the, the premium service um, provides access to support forum, um, a load of plugins that are built for BuddyPress and uh, WordPress networks. And we use two or three of them um, because they're just convenient. Um, but with themes, we use their what's called a farm pack, uh, mm -hmm. if you've heard of it. But they, um, they, they maintain 133 themes that they guarantee will work on network and BuddyPress installs. And so, again, whereas, you know, to begin with, I was just installing themes, you know, on a, you know, as and when I like the look of them and as and when people ask me to. Now we provide this set of 133 themes that we know are well managed. Um, I don't have to worry about whether they're going to break, uh, you know, on upgrades and things like that. And um, I, and I say to people, if none of them are suitable, then again, talk to me on a case-by-case -case basis and I can install a theme um, from WordPress.org and uh, make it available just on their site rather than across the network. Hmm. So that's how we're dealing with plugins and themes now. It's very much, you know, we provide a, a, a defined set and then if people have further requirements then we'll deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis and, and and just activate them on their sites only um, and, and it works are are you um aware of other institutions in the uk having a, a similar sort of wordpress offer um I, off the top of my head i'm sure uh, i can't remember a exactly which ones but i know that there's probably mm. a, hand, a handful of universities that that have a, um, uh, a network installed i'm not sure if any of them are offering it quite so openly um, uh, and just allow any member of staff and student to just use it without intervention i don't know about that i'm sure there are mm. know, some others but i couldn't point to them 
you know, with in my experience, uh, setting this up in 2008 and then putting Buddy Press on, I think we were one of the first to really um, make such a broad offer. Um, you know, obviously WordPress has been a, sitting on university servers since it was first developed, standalone sites and that kind of thing. But in, in trying to provide a, a university-wide service, I think we were, you know, not not probably not the mm. first, but one of the first. Yeah. Hmm. So um, yeah, I'm just looking through uh, uh, the kind of plugins that we have network activated here. Um, you know, I've got 35 plugins that are activated across the network um, by default. Uh, I'm just thinking what are the really key ones. Akismet, um, BuddyPress, um, Google Analytics. We collect analytics right across the platform. Um, With the Google Analytics, is it a, a central data collection for all the yeah. sites? Mm. Yeah, they can. They uh, each user can activate it on their own site using their own Google Analytics account. Yeah. But we also gather them across all sites, and that's using one of these plugins provided by the premium uh, WPMU Dev service. Right. Um, uh, so other um, other kind of important ones. Oh, uh, pri more privacy options. This is very important. Um, you've, you may have come across that plugin yourself. Um, it provides three additional privacy options for, for websites. So you can lock them down to just um, uh, registered users of the network. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, pretty much just Lincoln community. Um, or you can lock them down to just users added to that specific site. Or you can lock the site down to just administrators of the site. So um, it adds three more uh, privacy options, and, and we've always offered that. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's important to offer that so it, it, that people have a choice. They don't have to be creating public websites all the time. Mm. Um, uh, what else? Sorry, I'm just looking through this. Um, domain mapping. We use the WordPress MU domain mapping plugin. Um, and um, occasionally get requests to map alternative domains to, to sites, especially around research projects and kind of more official websites, um, increasingly departments um, and services at the university are setting up their own websites using WordPress mm -hmm. and rather than rather than having blogs in the domain name, you know they want um, something that doesn't isn't necessarily associated with blogs mm. i'm kind of uh, you know uh, uh, blogs made sense in 2008 2009 but if i was to set it up now i probably wouldn't put blogs in the domain ma domain name either because w wordpress is just a content management system now it's you know blogs is just one mm. aspect of it of um, interest, what would you use now sites but, probably yeah something very generic yeah yeah, uh, you know, I, it doesn't matter. Um, mm, yeah. it's, it, it, it doesn't matter to me, but just I, I think I would advise people to, um, because, that, you know, we, we just always saw it in terms of providing blogs. We didn't realize that, um, you know, that uh, schools were going to set up um, course websites um, and kind of marketing websites and that the estates office would have their own uh, site, you know. So um, blogs isn't, isn't necessarily appropriate. It's not generic enough anymore mm. um, for the variety of uses. The other one which I've mentioned, sorry, going back to plugins, is the WPMU LDAP authentication plugin. Um, I think there are two or three LDAP authentication plugins. Uh, this is by far my preferred one, and it's specifically for network installs. Mm -hmm. The ones that we offer to all staff um, they're not activated by default, but they're offered under the plugin panel. Are custom headers, custom headers and footers, so that people can throw stuff in the headers and footers without having to write, you know, edit the themes. Mm -hmm. um, feed WordPress, um, Jetpack. We've recently, over the summer, decided to provide Jetpack, which is the WordPress plugin. Um, yeah. You know, it's. Because uh, 
people were asking for a lot of social networking features. They wanted to be able to auto post to Twitter and mm. you know a b- bunch of stuff that Jetpack was starting to handle. Uh, and um, the the only issue, of course, is that it requires an individual API key. Um, mm. And so uh, I wish, like a Kismet, I could just hard code an API key and it would just work for everybody seamlessly. Um, but that's not how Jetpack works because it's so personalized to individual accounts and Twitter, you know. Um, yeah. So it has to be uh, a personal API key. So you'll see on our homepage of our website, I wrote uh, a blog post about... Uh, jetpack and why people might use it and if so the things that they should consider um uh so jetpack is now an offer and one that you know because it's automatic and because it's used by millions of people i'm fairly confident you know will will be a good offer for the future um link manager uh in a recent version of wordpress they removed the old links panel um uh that WordPress always had, um, and I think it's quite useful. So uh, Link Manager is a plugin which restores that functionality. Um, so that's on offer. Poll Daddy, um, again, it's just an automatic provided plugin, uh, you know, provided by the automatic the company. Mm. Um, and if people want to uh, add polls and ratings, then they can do. Um, it, it's just it's just an easy thing, kind of low maintenance plugin to offer if people need it. Um, uh, WP La- uh, Latex, WP Latex. Um, again, it's uh, a plugin developed by Automatic, the company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on WordPress.com, although people probably don't know about that. Um, and uh, I just like the thought that we're offering that you know, service at uh, absolutely no maintenance whatsoever. Um, uh, and if scientific users of the blogs, and uh, you know, I'd like to think that we get more and more scientific kind of use of the blogs, then maybe they'll make use of the LaTeX plugin. Um, WP Touch is a plugin that we offered for mobile view, although I'm thinking about pulling that now because of Jetpack. It offers yeah. a mobile option. Um, well, the LaTeX one is in Jetpack. Ah yes, no, as well. you're right. Yep, you're right. I uh, I think I'll probably remove both of those. Mm. Um, we switched, as I said. We the the thing is though, people may want the mobile view without going for the fully fledged jetpack. Mm. Um, I'll think about that. But you're right. I think increasingly we'll I'll probably pull the LaTeX and the and the WP touch plugins because jetpack is just starting to cover all these different bases really yeah um so yeah that's that's where we are with plugins server requirements one one mm. other thing which uh, you know i've had discussions a bit like this in the past with other people and server requirements we run a um a red hat server with eight gigs of ram uh, and that's plenty in fact let me tell you now what uh, resource usage of it is um it's a virtual server uh, I forget what the CPU is, but it's probably dual core, kind of mid-range. It's nothing by any means uh, really special. Yeah. Um, uh, CPU usage. Um, one CPU almost always runs under 40%, and the other CPU is below 10%. And um, physical memory usage, well... Uh, it's Linux, so it grabs a bunch of memory, um, but doesn't necessarily always um, use it. So it looks like physical memory usage is at six gigs at the minute, mm-hmm. uh, and and remains at six gigs all time at all times. Um, but if I just look at a different view of that, um, I bet that we're using. Some of the memory usage is because I threw quite a bit of memory at PHP and MySQL. Mm. Uh, not, not MySQL now because we've shifted it, but PHP, I think I probably gave it a gig of memory, something ridiculous. Um, yeah. We have eight gigs of virtual memory. Um, apparently, the real memory usage is just under six gigs. Uh, sorry, the real memory provision is just under six gigs, and my console is saying that two gigs is currently in use. So... Mm. Um, 
I, I, I think if you were starting off and you didn't want to ask for loads of resource, a four gig server mm. is, is plenty to get started with, probably good for a year or two bef- unless it really picks off, picks up. Mm. What's your thoughts about um, the, the managed hosting that's now seeming to become more popular as in dedicated WordPress managed hosting? Um, you, go on. Do you do you, do you, do you think that's just at the end of the day just going to be a lot of money for not much more than you would get just doing it internally yourself? Mm. Um, I, personally, I would want to know what that means when it's managed hosting and whether I, um, you know, can can manage it as I do manage it here um, because I know that the way we manage it here is tailored to what people need and the uses and variety of uses put to so it would have to be just as flexible yeah um, in terms of adding plugins and and you know the use of a kismet and all that kind of thing um, the other thing is if it's uh, out on a third party host um, LDAP requests, I'd. Mm. I, it's not impossible, but I. It yeah. would just be more of a security issue. Um, whereas all LDAP requests are running internally on, you know, through local hosts. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't outright reject them, but uh, given how little resource, relatively speaking, I think a network of in, uh, WordPress requires yeah and actually once it's set up um you know it it isn't that much maintenance at all um uh wordpress upgrades are flawless i can't remember the last time one went wrong Mm. Um, plug-in upgrades too you know we do a nightly backup so um yeah i i think it's it's pretty trivial compared to some of the massive systems that universities run. Mm. Um, I, you know, I would recommend a Kismet. I would recommend obviously backups, which is usually a cost to within a university. Um, and, uh, I'd recommend the premium, um, WPMU dev site. I, I know that, you know, there's been a bit of people have questioned, uh, whether it's, you know whether it should be used and i i think that um the money they charge makes it very good value for money and as someone who more or less alone manages our wordpress install it, it removes some of the headache um mm. that i'd otherwise have um so you know what 500 quid a year in a kismet and premium dev uh, fees and and the initial costs of of internally hosting it it's not too much really to ask for yeah Thanks again for your time. No, thank you. It's good to talk talk Mm. with you.